And obviously inflation skyrocketed in 2022 and people are worried about a recession. What do you make of the current state of the province's economy uh, now, as well as going forward into 2023? Yeah, no, absolutely. It's, it's definitely on a lot of people's minds right now is inflation and the economy. And there's been a lot of uncertainty around that. Uh, as we speak, we're actually, the Ministry of Finance, to which I'm involved, is doing budget consultations across the province. In fact, we're going to have uh, that tomorrow in Oakville. So we'll have stakeholders hearing and giving their perspectives. Now, in terms of the overall economy, where we see it, where inflation is, there's no doubt you are correct. Inflation was uh, sky high, relatively speaking, over the last 30, 40 years, in fact, at the highest level. Uh, in Ontario, but indeed across Canada and around the world. Now, there's a number of reasons why that's the case, which would include the fact that we came through COVID and there was a lot of pent up demand, there was supply chain issues. This was a worldwide phenomenon. Now there's been data coming out over the last six months that indicates it is trending down. That's good news. We need price stability for a strong, long-term sustainable economy. In fact, there was data that came out today on the CPI consumer price index in the United States that, that was in line with expectations. So it is trending down, that's good. Where do we see it going in 2023 and where do we see the economy? Well, there's no doubt there's a little bit of uncertainty. There's a bit of uh, headwinds with respect to inflation, although it's still coming down. But we do see the Ontario economy being well positioned. Uh, there's no doubt that price inflation affects a lot of people, particularly seniors and vulnerable people. And we've put through uh, some policies that will, will help those most vulnerable to, to weather the short-term pain of inflation. And that includes the gas tax reduction. We've uh, reduced the gas tax, so everyone's paying less at the pump uh, right now for another year. We've also increased the ODSP payments. So those are payments to people on disability. One thing that's interesting that we've done as well is we there's a, a cap right now on the number, the amount of money people receive on the ODSP when they're able to work. So some people on ODSP are able to work. And right now the cap was at $200 a month. So beyond that, they would be taxed. We've increased that $200 threshold to $1,000 a month. That's going to help 25,000 people who are disabled but still working receive more money. But we also believe that's going to bring 25,000 more people into the workforce that are able to work, may not be able to work full time, but can work part time. That's going to help businesses and that's going to help those folks as well. So that's a win, 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 I think, for, for everybody. So that, that's definitely a positive. We're also at doubling the amount of payments going to low-income seniors through the GAINS program for the year as well. So we're, we're trying to help those people that are vulnerable and most susceptible to the inflation that we're receiving. But overall, we think the Ontario economy is well positioned. We have a few headwinds, but we think the Ontario economy is strong and will withstand a little bit of the short-term volatility. Well, related to the economy, Bill 23, more homes built faster. We've got to talk about it. It has been a hot button issue for municipalities. The Ontario big city mayors are standing united against this bill, stating that cutting development charges aids builders, hurts home buyers, and the municipalities themselves, which is ultimately going to result in a municipal tax increase. You, being in Oakville, stand in between Mayor Bonnie Crombie and Mayor Marianne Mead Ward, two of the most outspoken mayors against this bill. I'm curious to get the province's response. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I, I fully support Bill 23. And I'll tell you why. I think there's a lot of misinformation on the bill. And I think there's perhaps some uh, fiddling around with some of the statistics on that. But the reality is, uh, there's about $9 billion sitting in municipal coffers right now from development charges. So not all this money that's being brought through the system is being put back in the system. There's been a 600% increase in development charges over the last decade. Now, we all know inflation is a little higher now, but that is well above inflation. There's no need for that, for that kind of trajectory. And that's making it more difficult for new home buyers. The average co condo in Toronto now has development charges of $100,000. The average house in the GTA has development charges of $116,000. That's added on to the price of the new home. Now that's a down payment for many people, or certainly a significant chunk of a down payment. We are getting support from 
groups across Ontario on this. For example, the CEO of the Habitat for Humanity has said this is probably the most transformative bill that's going to help people that need affordable housing. Uh, also, the Cooperative Housing Federation has been fully supportive because what we are doing, and I want to reiterate, is reducing or lowering the development charges on affordable housing, on not-for-profit housing, and we're reducing the amount on rental housing. We need to increase the stock of rental housing in this province. Last year was the largest increase in, in de development of rental de housing. Again, we sorely need that. So lowering the cost in that will encourage that kind of development. Now, if you're building a $5 million home in Oakville, development charges are not gonna change, okay? It's focused on affordable housing, not for profit, helping those most in need. So I would respectfully disagree with those mayors. And in fact, yesterday, uh, the, the city of Toronto came out with its budget for the next year, factoring all this in. And their total property tax increase was, I believe around five and a half to 6% less than inflation. So I think those numbers that are being thrown out there are, you know, perhaps inflated by some of the some of the municipalities. All right. Well, let's round things out here and do something positive at the end of this. No conflict here, at least I don't think so. Healthcare, yeah. healthcare, yeah. but positive, which is crazy to say. Uh, local pharmacists can now treat thirteen common ailments and renew prescriptions. Seems like a great idea. How did it come about? Yeah, no, absolutely. We know there's pressures on the healthcare system. And I think COVID obviously magnified that. And again, this is not just Ontario centric. This is indeed all of Canada and globally. It's everywhere. Look at the US, look at other provinces. So there is pressure on the healthcare system. What can we do to alleviate that? Well, we can build long term care beds, which we're building 30,000 long term care beds, we can hire more professionals, we can build new medical schools, which were our government has brought about with the first new medical school in the GTA in over 100 years being going to be built in Brampton. What else can we do? Well, we can have pharmacists perhaps give inoculations or prescribe certain for certain ailments. Uh, so the government determined that there are 13 ailments to which pharmacists can prescribe medication. Uh, for example, whether it's uh, pink eye and issues like that where perhaps not needing to go to the doctor will save time, save money, That'll reduce the number of doctor visits and pharmacists are very well qualified to be able to prescribe ailments for for some of these types of ailments. So I think, again, this is a very positive. It's positive for pharmacists. It's positive for Ontarians. It's positive for doctors. It's positive for, for the healthcare system. And uh, we've received overwhelming support on uh, this initiative that we brought about on January 1st. I think this will help alleviate the medical system. Anything we can do in that respect, I think is good for the province. You bet. Unclog them hospitals and unclog them doctor's offices. Thank you so much, MPP Crawford. A pleasure to speak with you again. Let's do it again soon. Love to. And again, Happy New Year and Happy New Year to everyone watching. Thank you.